I admire the Chinese because I've seen in my lifetime, in my rural village on Lake Victoria now, we should be renamed if you ask me. We are eating fish tilapia from China. Somebody is farming tilapia in China. I do not know what they feed tilapia there. But they then bring them for us to eat. Fact. And yet there is a lake there. We are importing chicken from Brazil and eggs from Brazil. Have our chicken forgotten how to lay eggs? You know, these, these, are the, these are the little things that annoys one. And I'm submitting to us, therefore, in defining pan-Africanism, let us not imprison ourselves in this definition, whether it's state or this. What we want is an Africa. I'm putting it in a very crude way. I wish I was saying it in my mother tongue. What we want is an Africa where the boundaries imposed on us are purely for purposes of administration. Where the boundaries do not stop one Africa from moving from one country to the country to the other in an orderly manner. We are not saying that there will be disorder. Where there will be a form of government, whether the so-called presidents will now be called governors, I do not know. We'll find a name for them. But they'll simply administer that territory, but there will be a pan-African government that regulates us on critical matters, on defense, on foreign affairs, on matters of the economy and currency, on the exploitation of our resources that determines how we defend ourselves. And I can't agree with you more. You know, if today Africa, if the United States of America wanted to destroy Africa, it could do so in one week. This is how. They would station two carriers on Indian Ocean, a two down south, two in the west, and two in the Mediterranean, and they would unleash all these missiles and would be back into the Stone Age. We are weak, and now because we have bases in Djibouti, you have an American base, you have a Chinese base, you have a, a Japanese. In other words, Africa is in a situation which it cannot control. If there was a war today, Africa is a target. In a war that we do not know, we have been involved. When the European tribes were fighting in 1914, they don't call them tribal wars. But when the European tribal tribes were fighting in 1914, we were there. And I'm sure there is a monument here in Tanzania commemorating Africans who participated in a tribal wars. The English tribe was fighting the German tribe and the French. Then. They fought another tribal war in 1940-39. They're always fighting and they involve us. And they weaken us. And I'm submitting that going forward, we must define, define ourselves, but not allow somebody else to define us.